Alright guys, welcome back. This is, uh, the, I guess, in terms of the, I want to say the final update video, that doesn't sound right. But uh, Funimation finally um, has been, oh, well, they caught up a couple of days ago uh, for uh, the rest of the voice actors for the English dub. Um, oh, they're currently caught up to the ja what the Japanese have so far released um, character design wise. Uh, so, first we have uh, voice actor for Tori, Kent Williams will in fact be coming back. Uh, so, uh, his little interview goes, How does it feel to be returning to Fruits Basket? Furuba! <laughs> it feels like a return to the beginning of my funny career. This is my third show and is especially dear to my heart since my son Adam, voicing under the name Avery Rice Williams, played young Keo. Now I have to go watch that again. <laughs> that, that, that is really cute though. Uh, that his son got to voice young Keo. Uh, what has changed for you over the years since Fruits Basket was first released? Um, age? Huh. Very little. I'm still a little, uh, I'm still a local resident and work entirely in the arts. I've loaded up to touring and education director for Ge Geppetto's Marionette Theater and I still teach Japanese kabuki in schools. My home is overrun with puppets and kimonos. What is your zodiac animal? What would you want it to be? Hattori and I are both the dragons, and I wouldn't change my zodiac designation for anything. And I love that Hattori transforms into a tiny seahorse, seahorse with hurty eyes. Do you have a message for Fruits Basket fans? Anyone get this reference? She was my spring. Hint, it was, fr it was from Hattori's episode. So yes, Kent Williams is coming back to play Hattori. Uh, then they also announced that Christopher Sabat will be returning to also play Ayame again since he was the original voice of Miami as well. Uh, so how does it feel to be returning to Fruits Basket? It's a shock, honestly. It's such a beloved series and it and still gets massive cheers whenever I mention at a convention that I was the voice of Ayame. It also had, had an amazing cast, spearheaded by the stupid, talented uh, Laura Bailey and directed by one of the best, um, one of my best friends, Justin Cook. One of the most common questions over the years was, do you think they'll ever make more Fruits Basket? And every year it started to seem less and less likely. I can't believe it's finally happening. What has changed for you over the years since Fruits Basket was first released? Oh, not much. You know, just basically 15 years of work, a wife, two kids, massive advancements in digital recording technology, and, like, the internet. <laughs> what is your zodiac animal and what would you want it to be? I'm the bull. I like being a bull. Although, for obvious reasons, I'd love to be a dragon. <laughs> Do you have a message for Fruits Basket fans? Well, the thing I regret most about working on the, on the show the first time is not remembering much about the recording sessions. So when fans have asked me on panels what it was like to work on Fruits Basket, I only had a, only had a very, had a, had few memories because I had no idea how important it was going to be. I promise that this time, fans, I'm going to have lots of stories. So that's it in terms of voice actors that are be coming back, and then from then on they have new voice uh, announcements. Uh, I'll get to Akito here in a second. Um, but they have... Um, they now they officially have announced our Uo and Hana. So this is uh, for Uo's uh, Elizabeth Maxwell, and I've already gone over. If you look at my previous update video, um, uh, the the voices that she did. Um, but her little questions are: Were you ready? Were you already familiar with Fruits Basket before you were cast? What's been your experience with the series? I definitely heard of Fruits Basket before, as it's such a well-regarded part of anime history. But I hadn't yet had a, I hadn't yet had a chance to see it. When I found out I had been cast in the new series, I hopped online and decided to check out some of the original. I wasn't necessarily planning on watching all of it, but now I'm hooked. It reminds me of why I fell in love with anime in the first place. The depth of emotion, the beauty, the quirk, the charm, all bundled up together in one perfect package. I can easily see why the show was such a big hit when it debuted and why it remains popular to this day. What is your zodiac animal and what would you want it to be? My zodiac animal is the pig, and I think it and I think I fit the description pretty well. I like the pig. I wouldn't change my sign even if I could. Do you have a message for Fruits Basket fans? To the OG Fruits Basket fans, I think you're going to love this new uh, iteration, what this new iteration brings to the table. It's really been an honor to take on the character of Risa Uotani. 
and I hope you enjoy my interpretation of her. To the Fruits Basket newcomers, get ready to squeeze in addition to your get ready to squeeze in an addition to all to your list of all time favorite anime. Ah, so I am excited about her. Uh, and then we have uh, and then again similar. It had been leaked that Uo, uh, who's Uo and Hana's voice actors are, but these are the actually official announcements for them with their little interviews. Were you already familiar with Fruits Basket before you were cast? What's been your experience with the series? Yes, this anime is legendary to me. Dragon Ball Z and Fruits Basket were the first shows I ever heard of when I discovered anime. What is your zodiac animal and what would you want it to be? I'm a sheepy, hashtag go. Which I think is super cute and pretty accurate when you read about their traits. Choosing another animal is too hard. I love them all. Though if there were, if there was a whale zodiac, I'd totes want to be that one. Especially if it was a narwhal. Do you have a message for Fruits Basket fans? When I got the news that I'd been cast in the series, I freaked. I really hoped OG, I really hope OG and, and new fans welcome me to the FB family. I hope... I, pr I hope. I promise to do my best playing Saki Hanajima, sending all my FB fans big waves of love. <laughs> uh, it's funny. So, I don't, again, I've already gone over who these two have played. Um, but then you have the official announcement for Akito, which is Colleen Clinkenbeard. Were you familiar with Fruits Basket prior to being cast? What's been your experience with the series? The original Fruits Basket series is my favorite anime that I'm not directly involved with. I've always wished I could have been in the show, and now, somehow, miraculously, my wish has been granted. I couldn't be more excited. What is your zodiac animal, and what do you want it to be? I'm a monkey. Initially, I was disappointed to learn that, because dragon, please. But after reading about it a little bit, it sounds pretty flattering, and I really hope I can live up to my monkey traits. Do you have a message for Fruits Basket? Fruits Basket fans. Turns out a thousand paper cranes really do grant a wish. And I'll get to why she's referencing that in a minute. But uh, I think Colleen Clinkenbeer will probably do pretty good. Uh, I don't have the list of, of what voice actors she's done, although I looked at it before. I know she does, she's done obviously since she's a female, she's done a lot of female voice, actor, voice acting, but she has done some male voice characters, both young male characters, as well as uh, she plays a uh, Luffy in one place. She plays the main character, uh, Luffy, in One Piece. So, um, there's that. You at least know, uh, you have that. So I, th I think, I think she'll do good as a keto. Um, now, the, the, her reference to the Thousand Paper Cranes is that, um, so that Funimation just put out this little video, and I'm, I'm, I'm I know that the audio's not playing, but whatever. Basically, it's just talking about how, um, you know, like 14 years ago at one of the anime conventions, um, with how, with, with them, like in 2005, at one of the anime conventions they intended, that they attended, uh, with them, with Funimation knowing how popular and, and well received the series was, they, uh, pretty much folded a thousand paper cranes, and they were gonna sit, and, and had, had, uh, fans come up, uh, or, and fold a thousand paper cranes and they were going to send them off to Japan so that they could, you know, basically, it was making a wish for uh, a season two or, uh, because, and I think, I don't know the exact story or how it goes, but it's like if you, in Japan, it's like if you fold a thousand paper cranes or something like that, a wish is, a, like a wish can be granted or something like that. Um, I'm not entirely caught up with that. I just know it's something, I just know it's something like that. Uh, so that's what they did. And, of course, it didn't obviously happen immediately. But then what wound up happening is that we eventually got the remake. Um, but other than that, uh, that's really about it. Um, oh, yeah, that's right. Uh, so also, just for those who are curious, uh, and I'll leave a link in the description for this. Um, all, for those who wanted to know where all the locations for the theaters were going to be for the debut episodes, or the premiere episodes, uh, Funimation has now actually put out a list of all the different theaters that it's going to be in. And so I'll, I'll leave a link down in the description to where, to the website I was just at. Uh, but other than that, that's so far what they've announced, and so it's just a matter of waiting for you know, things to happen, and waiting to see if, uh, 
the Japanese side will announce anything else. Um, but at the current moment, Funimation's caught up uh, in terms of cast announcement for the Japanese side, so other than that, it's just a waiting game. Um, but I'll try to keep you guys updated, so uh, thanks for watching, and bye for now.